Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's Elia Yaakov. How you doing? Uh, usually I, I record my sayings and then I put them up on online. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that today because uh, my recording situation, you know what I'm saying, kind of messed up. So that's going to be TBA right now. But I would like to say Shalom to everyone. Anyone who's seen this video today because it's entitled Unification to Israel, before I go any further, what I would like to say is that if you are Ashkenim or if you are Sephardim, meaning you're from somewhere in Spain, maybe you're Yemenite, maybe you're from, you know, uh, somewhere in Palestine, or maybe you're in the Soviet Union in Germany, a lot of you are going to tune away from this video because of my dark skin, because you're going to think, oh my God, here we go, another black Hebrew Israelite. Well, understand something. If Hashem, who you worship, to say that you are to be a Kadash Am towards, and if you profess yourself to be the Amuha Elohim, Elohei Israel, then you should pay attention, because your Nefeshim should understand that we are of Echad Nefeshim. We are of a similar, we are of a unity in spirit. So therefore, we should not be dividing ourselves, and that's what the unity of Israel, this is what this is called, the unification of Israel. A multiracial people. This is part one. I'm going to break it down according to what the Nevi'im said. We're going to go into Hosea. We're going to go into Yeshaya. We're going to go into the Hebrew. This is what I do. So for those who've never seen my video, if you are a Jew and you're from anywhere else in the world, just give me five seconds. Give me a few seconds to explain to you because what you say is Hashem or Adonai. I choose to say Yahuwah. I choose to say, you know, Yahuwah. I choose to say Yahweh. You know, those things, it don't matter. That's, that's break back to the point of the Torah, the Hanevi'im, and the Ketuvim uh, is what it is that we are to lamed, that we are to teach, that we are to learn, that we are to accept. It is the Aleph. It is the founding stone. It is the beginning, the birth of what being Yehudim is. I want to prove to the people that we are multiracial for the black Hebrew Israelites that go out on the corners and you profess to our Achim of the Cushitic facial, you know what I'm saying, or the Adamic, which means they're brown or brown tone, light brown tone, dark tone, and even the Laban, even the white skin, the fair skinned people. We cannot be trying to criticize each other. There were Jews in all places of the world. We're going to get into the scriptures. This is the unification of Israel. This is part one. So I would like for you to turn into your Tanakh, go into the Neve'im, and go to Hosea. For those who are reading along in the English, like I say, go to the book of Hosea, the 7th chapter, and the 8th verse is where we're going to start. I'm going to go slowly. I am a student of the uh, Ivrim Devarim, of the word of the, of the Hebrew. I am a study. I am a student of it, and I study it. I have a cool background on it. So for those who try, don't try to correct me, you know, don't try to necessarily correct my English and let, or my, my Hebrew unless you're trying to help me. Don't use it as a tool to come against what the uh, Ruach has put upon my pay. Okay? All the pay. All right? We're going to go to Hosea, to the seventh chapter, and the eighth verse it goes, If Raim Bayamim Yit Bolal, If Raim Haya Uga Beli Chafuka, if Raim ba Amim Yitbolal, if Raim has mixed, he has combined himself with the people. It says, if Raim, if Raim Haya Uga, if Raim has become a cake, Bili Ha Fuka, not turned. He has become a cake unturned, not turned, not spun around, not, you know what I mean? And I, I know how to cook, I'm okay. Okay, and just like last night, I was cooking my soap with me and my wife. We were eating lentil soup, to believe it or not. Yeah, I, I wanted to do a video. That's what I'm saying, and my my stuff messed up on me. But we were eating lentil soup last night with mo with my soap with unleavened bread that we were making, and I burned a piece because I started conversating and doing something, and I came back and I noticed that it was very dark on one side and it was brown on the other side. This scripture here has a multiple meaning for the Messianic people who think in the Nefeshim. They think all things are spiritual. Yes. Ephraim has mixed himself among the people, which means he has combined himself with their rituals and their ways and their customs. He has become a cake that is not turned an unstable person. This is where this can be understood in spirit, but yet in physical truth. I pray that you, Yehudim, understand that what I'm saying is that he has become a cake unturned. He has become dark on one side and he has become brown on the other side. In part two, I'm going to go more into that. And when we're going to understand that if Raim became dark and he also became light. I would ask you now to turn to Yeshaya, to stay in the Neve'im and turn to Yeshaya, to Sefer Yeshaya. We're going to go to the seventh chapter also, to the second verse. And it goes something like this. 
It says, While you God elevate David le more. As it is reported by the house of David, Naka Aram al Ephraim. Aram is resting upon Ephraim. This phrase indicates confederation. Aram is the people of Syria, the people of the Armenians. No, you know, not necessarily just a Syria, Syria in modern day time, which is actually part of, you know what I'm saying, half of it is actually part of the land of Ephraim or northern Israel, and it belongs to some of the tribes of Israel. But what I mean is Syria, the actual people, the Turkish people, the Armenian people, those people who are in that area, the, Georgia, the people from Georgia, the people from Armenia, those people, okay, they were resting, they were in confederation with Ephraim. The scripture goes on to say, Wayana lavo ulav amo. And it shook his heart and the heart of his people. It shook his heart, his conscience, and the heart of his people. Ephraim lost its contact with Yahuwah by being in confederation with these other people. Does that necessarily mean that they followed other Elohim? Not necessarily. But it also could mean that they contributed or they blended in like he said he mixed themselves with the other people they may have continued to keep the name of Yahuwah and spread the truth of Torah to these people and this could be the also the the birth of the people who spread to the north and who became what we know as Ashkenazim there's a possibility that these are the Ashkenazi that you people who are professing yourselves to be the true Yehudim you are not actually from Yehudim and I'm, that's what I'm here to prove that you are actually possibly some of you the Ashkenazi are not necessarily Yehudim. The majority of you are from Ephraim. And you have continued to follow Torah, which is a beauty, and Hashem, Yahuwah, shall bless you. It goes on to say, Wayana lavavo ulav amo. And it shook his heart and the heart of his people. Then it says, Kanoa atse ya'ar, which means that the trees of the forest shake. You know, Mipne ruach, from the presence of the wind, or from the wind blowing pretty much is what this is indicating so his heart has swayed like the trees and I'm from southern Arkansas there's a lot of trees and there's a lot of wind that blows and the trees they sway and this is what Ephraim has become they sway they've gone back and forth to where some of them have actually mixed in things now I'm not saying all Ashkenazim are not Yehudim that's what I'm saying your bloodline could lead back to Yehudim I'm going to get into that but what I'm trying to point out to you people is that we have mixed amongst our people, and the state that we are calling Israel will never become to its full power until the people and the powers that be realize that we all are to unite. No Project Solomon or Moses. We are going to all of the four corners, and we're going to gather all those whose heart turns to Yahweh, to Adonai, Elohei Israel. Anyone's who heart who live turns back to Yahuwah is his children, and we should be allowed to come back to the land of Yerushalayim. If we choose. We're going to go on to the book of Yeshayahu further. We're going to go into the 11th chapter now. To the 10th verse. And it goes. And it will come to pass in that day. A root of Yeshai or Jesse. Which will rise up as a signal or a standard. This word lenace comes from nace, which means a standard, a signal, a banner, okay? A, 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 a reputation to stand by. He says, Elayu goyim yit roshu. To him the goyim will seek. They will reach for They're going to seek him. Now, many people are upset because they say, Was this Yeshua ben Yusuf? Because the prophecy that comes after has not fulfilled, has not truly fulfilled itself. Could it be a possibility that Yeshua been a use of fulfilled part of it as far as in being the signal and the banner and the symbol to the children of Yeshua, to the Goyim? Because he said he said himself that he came not for the Goyim, but he came for the children of Israel. That root of David, that root, you know, like a root of a tree. It's a it's a, something that we'd have to contemplate as Yehudim. We cannot rule it in or out. But what we do know is he says that to him, he, the Goyim will seek. And then it says, Wayata menuchato kavod. Okay? And his resting place will be glorious. It will be honorable. It will be wealthy, majestic. Alright? So this sign, this standard, this banner, this symbol that was to come from the root of David. Now there's two things I want to point out. Because if 
we're looking for the root of David, we have to realize that he is from all races, that Ephraim and the children of Judah also have been scattered amongst all races. So therefore we must understand that when we're looking for this so-called Mashiach, for those who do not believe he hasn't come, then you can't just say that he's going to necessarily be Ashkenazim. You have to understand that there were 12 tribes. There were 12 arm amongst the people of Israel. So we have to look deep. But we know that if this was Yeshua, Hamashiach, he was a banner or a symbol that has brought honor and wealth and majestic, majestic feeling and glory to the people who follow him to the Goyim. So as it's the Yehudim, we cannot necessarily condemn the Christianity. Messianics, I give them a pass because at least that you know they're trying to come to the mitzvah of Yahuwah. They understand the importance of following the mitzvah of Hashem, of Adonai Yahuwah, Elohei Yisrael. We're going to continue on. We're going to read in 11, 11 and 11 of Yeshaya. It says, Waya bayom hahu, and it shall come to pass, or it will come to pass in that day, Yosef Adonai, our master will increase, Shenit yado liknot, his hand a second time, it sar amu to purchase, to buy. I'm sorry, uh, yado lik no to a second time to purchase or to buy and acquire to a possess lik no purchase acquire buy or possess a second time, like he did in what in Egypt, because this is Yeshayah's time. This is. Before the second temple, before you Babylonian Jews who are going to say that your family, your Kohenic family goes back to Babylon. That's what I'm going to get into in part two. But at this point in time, we're speaking about the Bnei Yisrael, the children of Yisrael, and the house, the Bet Ephraim, the northern kingdom. He said he was going to increase his hand a second time to purchase, to buy, to acquire, to possess. Continuing on, and it says, Etzar Amu, the remainder of his people. Because, see, uh, the majority of us have been mixed amongst the people, like I said, with Ephraim. Some of us have been taken into captivity. And we're going to do videos about how we have been taken into captivity from out of the land of Africa because of the next verse I'm going to get into that. And we were also brought to America. It goes on to say, after it says, It sar, uh, shar amu, or amo, his hand a second time to purchase his people, the remainder of his people. It says, Asher yishar, uh, Yashir, Yishair, Me Ashur, which remain within Ashur, or Ashur, Asher, Assyria, the people of Assyria, who we know to be somewhat Palestinians, some of the people that are in the land of Assyria, the whole land, northern Iraq, the land that consists of what Assyria is today, and those people who are in that area. All of you people in that area, he's reaching out to let you know that, yes, the children of Israel are mixed amongst all of those people in Palestine. Even though if some of them may be Muslim, some of them may be Muslim, some of them may be Yehudi, they may practice Judaism. They may be some Christian, they may be Messianic, but this is about the seed. This is about a generation, a generation and generation of a people, of an arm. He says his remainder, which remains in Ashur, which is Assyria. He goes on to say, Umi Mitzrayim, Umi Patros. Mitzrayim indicates the upper Nile. It has been translated as Egypt. We know that was commit. We know that was the, not the name of the place in this day and time because the Greeks had not yet come in, so they had not named it Egypt yet. The Assyrians had not came in yet, so therefore we understand that they had not necessarily their colors. But this indicates the northern, the Mediterranean part, Mediterranean Egypt which could have consisted of multicolored people, kind of like the African-American community today. And also it would, have, it would have been Ishmaelites, it would have been Arabians, it would have been all of these people in the northern part. But it also says within Patros. Patros was the lower now, so we're going southern, we're going further into Africa, and we know that the people of that area were dark-skinned people. So it did mention Assyria, it did mention the north and the Lebanic people, the fair-skinned people. And it also is mentioning now Mitzrayim, Upper and Lower Nile, which would be a mixture between Nubian and also Middle Eastern, so-called Palestinian people in this day and time. It goes on to say, Umi Kush, Umi Elam. Kush. And within Kush, from within Kush, Ethiopia, Black Africa. We know, even at this day and time, in most of your Bibles, it says Ethiopia. 
and Ethiopia in the time of the King James Bible was considered the land all the way from where Abyssinia is, the Horn of Africa, today's modern Ethiopia, and the entire land all the way across to the, to the western coast of Africa and down the land of the black people. Cush at this time was not necessarily just one kingdom. Yahweh was indicating all people, Cush. It was black-faced people. He just, ended, he just told you there was Mitzrayim, there were Patrim, there were Asherim, different brands of Israel. And he said within Cush, and he says Elam, Elam is Persia, or India, because the ancient Persians were Indians. They were more brown-skinned people, sun people. They were not necessarily the Armenian, uh, Turkish, Indo-Aryan blended of people who have taken over that land now. Because sometimes when you see an Indian, he's fair-skinned because he's Indo-Aryan, he's Syrian. Also, I mean, you know what I'm saying? He's from Syria. He's Aramian. He's from the Aramit. Okay, he's, uh, he's from Aram. Therefore, you know what I'm saying? He looks like uh, uh, a, a, a mid-continent Shemitic person, an Indo-Aryan, with a mix of Japhetic blood in him. That's why they're that color. But the true Persian Empire, the Aladdins, when you watch it, me and my daughter was watching Aladdin the other day, and Aladdin was just as brown as I am, just maybe a little bit lighter. Okay? It goes on to say, Umi Shinar Ume Hamat. Shinar is in Iraq, Kuwait, Yemen, the people from that area, Saudi. All the way from Shinar, the ancient Shinar and the modern Shinar. Yahuwah, he knew in time, he knew what Shinar was. He knew that there was two Shinars. Okay? He was indicating that group of the people, the Iraqis, the Kuwaitis, the Yemenites, the Saudis. Within those people, there would be Israelite. And he says from Hamat, Hamat, Syria, the Turks, the Indo Aryans. Okay, and then he goes on by ending this verse by saying, Umei, Umei, Iye, Hayam, and from the coast of the seas, which are the Greeks, Indonesian people, the people over there in the, in the Filipinos and those places, the Sephardim, the Spaniards, those who are in France, the Berbers, those who are in the northern Mediterranean peri places, the coast of the seas, the places of Africa, the indigenous Americans, those who came over here in due time, that's why there's been physical evidence found of a Hebraic presence in America before the modern European Jews came over here with the uh, other Europeans. Israel needs to be unified amongst all people. We're going to go into 12 and it says, Wanasa nes lagoyim. Then he will, so then he will, thus he will raise a standard or a signal or a banner or a sign to the goyim. He says, Wasaf nidche Yishra'el, and he will gather, collect, this word nidke, it means gather, collect, assemble, I mean wasaf means gather, collect, assemble, I'm sorry, nidke, the outcasts, okay, the put away people of Yishra'el, the outcasts, the people of the world, of Yishra'el, those are who the outcasts, those who are under the curses of, of Devarim 68, those who are under these curses of not following the Torah of our Avot, not following it and passing it on door to door, generation a generation, generation and generation. We did not pass that on. But I'm speaking out to the people of Israel. I understand that it's more than just Ashkenaim and it's more than just Sepharim and Yemenite Jews in this world. There are Kashim and there are more than just the Beta Israel, the Falashas, even though that means the outcast. Us black Americans, the majority of us have been still standard as outcasts. And the only ones who have not been standard as outcasts, out of 85% of the successful so-called African-American in America, they've had to sell their soul to do something that they are against, or they had to be against the help or the furtherment of their people. They became American and no longer cared about the furtherment of their people, even though we've been set back and oppressed for so many years. He goes on to say, Ufutso Yehuda, and those dispersed of Yehuda, those dispersed, the outcasts of Israel. Those who have been scattered out, outcasts. Yeah, some of you Yehudim, your Holocaust was serious, but the Middle Passage was even worse. The, the, the era time when the, the Muslim invaders first came into Africa and took over that area and threw out the Balad of Sudan, which where you had Timbuktu. And we learned about in Yarum Yah, we're going to go over it about Elephantine, a city on the southern Nile. These were, you know, camps, cities established by Yehudim, African Yehudim. Just as well as we see that they were the dispersed and the outcasts of Israel. Some were in Assyria, which was spread them north. Some were in Greek. Some were in Spain. Some were in the northern coast. It says the coast of all people, where we all went. And that's when he says, Yekabet me arba kanfot ha'aret. 
and he is going to gather from the four corners, the four extremities, the ends of the wings, the confote. The confote comes from the word kanaf, the border, the four corners, four corners of the earth, which would be the Americas, north and south, which would also be to the far east, which we know as, like I say, India, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnamese, all of those people, it's, pe it's probably people of Israel all over. But you Jews are not necessarily reaching into that place, not as a whole movement. We need to pull this together and bring a unified Israel. And we will see the most powerful movement of Hashem, Yahuwah, Elohe Yisrael. I bet you since the times of uh, Yeshua, uh, Yeshua ben Yehud Sadak in Zerubbabel ben Dawid of the planet of the, he's going to pull us all from the four corners. We're going to end this in 13 and 11 and 13. It says, with Sarah kinat if Raim, then he will turn off the envy of if Raim with Sore Yehuda Yikareitu, and the enemies of Yehuda will be cut off. If Raim lo Yekane Yehuda, and if Raim will no longer envy Yehuda, we Yehuda lo Yatsor it if Raim, and Yehuda would no longer be hostile or oppress or bind or trouble if Raim. That envy. That Ephraim has goes way back into the early days when the northern tribes of Ephraim, the house of Joseph, the Beta Yusuf, chose not to follow the mitzvah of Yahuwah and bow down to the Beta David and the house of Judah. Therefore they rebelled and they began to build their own temples. That's what I'm saying. They did not necessarily start worshiping other gods. They just, just took the Torah, took the word of Yahuwah and did it in their own way. Which is a lot of you Ephraimites doing today with Judaism. That's what Judaism is to me. It is the northern tribe's religion copying the truth of what Yehuda would have done. They did not follow a, a, or read besides the book of Yashir, besides Enoch. Okay? And what I'm reaching out to do for those, if, like I say, if, you, if you're a Hebrew Israelite and you're still watching this, I pray that Yehuda blesses you and that you continue to learn and that we all learn together and we grow together. But like I say, if any one of you who are Sephardic or Ashkenazi or, you know, from any other so-called sect or denomination of Judaism and you are taking out the time to pay this, pay attention to this video and Yashim, uh, Hashem blessed your heart and opened up your ayin to see that my nefesh is pure, my nefesh is tova, it is good and I, my intentions are perfect. Pray about the unification of Israel. The oppression that has been put on the Beta Israel, the Falashas who are in Yerushalayim today, fight for that. That is not right according to Torah. Those are truly your people. Black Hebrew Israelites in America standing on the corners and you're yelling, you're not helping us. We need to go back to Israel. We need to sit down and develop a boardship of the unification of Israel to where we can sit down with the Arabis who are in Israel today. And we need to reach out and build a bigger bridge. No conversion to, to your Arabis. There's no such thing as a conversion. If a man needs to be circumcised, let that man be circumcised. If he chooses not to be circumcised, let him circumcise his heart and his mind and make sure that his first son that has been given to Yahuwah, to Adonai Yashim, is circumcised. There's ways that we can sit down and we can counsel upon and ponder upon the Torah and the mitzvot of Yahuwah and find an agreement to where we can become a unified people, Echad, just as Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. We know the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. This is how Yisrael is to be. We are to be one. So I hope that you paid attention to this video. I'm going to start working on part two and try to bring it to you now that I have some free time. And may Yahuwah bless your soul. May he bless your spirit. Baruchah Yahuwah. We say, Amen, Amen. And we know that one day Israel shall be reunited. Eliyah Yaakov. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for part two. Shalom.